when a capacitor is connected in an AC circuit, what happens? That is the center of our topic today. Without wasting time, we are connecting a capacitor, a capacitor, all right, in an AC circuit, or in AC circuit. That's our topic today. We are going to learn what happens when a capacitor is connected in an AC circuit. So without wasting time, let's just do a diagram. Diagram of a capacitor connected in an AC circuit is what I'm doing now. Okay? So with this, we bring down this, this ammeter that will measure current flowing. This is our key, right? And then we have a, a source of power supply at this point, maybe AC power supply. Okay, we have a source of power supply here with this symbol. Of course, we are talking about AC, right? And then we have our diagram complete. That is it. So this is AV, okay? An alternating voltage. This is C, a capacitor that will offer some amount of capacitance in the circuit. And we are going to measure the potential drop across the capacitor. That's V, and then down to this point. All right. So when this happens, when the heat closes, current flows. The amount of current flowing into this circuit is measured by the instrument ammeter. Okay. So we get to this point and then flow into the capacitor. The capacitor is an electronic component, okay, that stores electrical energy in its electric field. That's what a capacitor does. It stores electrical energy or electric energy, so to say. Now we have this, and it's very simple. This is an AV source which will power the system. That's an alternating voltage. And once we have an alternating voltage, of course, an alternating current will be produced. So if that is the case, we have V is equal to V naught sine omega T, and this will produce I equal to I naught sine omega T. That is it. So with this, we have started. What are we going to check here? We're going to check the character or the behavior of a capacitor when it is connected in AC circuits. That's what we're going to check. We're going to check the, very, the following parameters, the I, the, the capacitive reactance I see, that is XC, capacitive reactance, the current flowing in the circuits, the capacitive reactance of the, of the capacitor, and so on and so forth. So these are the things we're going to check. Now we have this. When current flows into the capacitor, certain amount of uh, characteristics is triggered. That's the first thing. And how does the capacitor behave when it is connected in AC circuits? Now without wasting time, we are talking about capacitor and the alternating voltage, all right? So what we need to do, by the time we connect capacitor, look at this, we are going to state Ohm's law as well, all right? But this time we are not talking about resistance, we are talking about capacitive reactance, or the reactance of the capacitor when it is connected in AC circuit. So look at this. In place of this, we are going to look at V, is equal to I flowing in the circuit and then capacitive reactance XC. How do we find this? First of all, we'll make sure that we understand what happens in this in a situation like this. What happens? So for, for us to find the capacitive reactance of a capacitor connected in an AC circuit like this, it's very simple. We remember that one 
1 all over 2 ft, okay? That is it. If we can, this is not ft, fc, okay? This is fc, right? Where c represent the value of the capacitor connected in the circuit. And then something like this. We can as well restate this. Capacitive reactance is given as 1 all over omega c, right? Omega c, where the omega is 2 pi f, and then c is uh, the, the capacitance of the capacitor, right? Okay, so with this, we have now defined the reactive capacitance or the capacitive reactance of the capacitor. Now, the next thing we need to do is what happens when current flows into the capacitor and how does it behave alongside the AV, that is alternating voltage, okay? When current flows as a result of the source, which is alternating voltage, we have V, the alternative voltage, is equal to V naught sine omega, right? So if your current flows, we have something like I is equal to I naught as I stated earlier, right? Sine omega T plus some amount of phase difference. Let me picture up. Plus some kind of phase difference. So we must take note of this. It's very, very important. All right. But before we move into this, we must illustrate something. When a capacitor is connected in an AC circuit and the circuit is powered or supplied with current by an alternating source, what happens is that the capacitive current I see, the capacitive current I see leaves, leaves the capacitive voltage VC. I repeat, when a capacitor is connected in AC circuits, the current flowing into the capacitor leads, that's what is called capacitive current. Capacitive current leads the capacitive voltage, that is the potential drop across the capacitor. That's what it means. Alright, if that is the case, we have something like this. Look at this. Look at this small diagram where we have uh, this is V, it starts from this point move down, goes up again, again, in this form. That is Vc, capacitive voltage now. Now, if we do this, for current, we have something like this. Look at this, this is going to be for Rc, the capacitive current. What happens here is that, instead of starting from zero, right? Instead of starting from zero, it starts somewhere up. Goes down first, comes up, goes down again, and then comes up in that form. What does this tell us? It tells us that current move up first before the voltage. Therefore, current capacitive current leads the capacitive uh, voltage by some amount of factor, which we are going to take care of. All right. So current comes up first before voltage. In other words, current leads at this point. By the time it's coming down, voltage is going up. So if we take a trace of this, look at this. Can you see? Look at it. And this is, if we take a trace here again, you can see. The trough of this is the crest of the capacitive current. I repeat, the trough of the, vo of the capacitive voltage is the crest of the capacitive current. So there is a kind of miscombine. All right? Now, we twist again at this point. You can see what happens here. So that is it. The crest of the capacitive voltage now is the trough of the capacitive current. So they don't move in the same step. They are out of phase. All right? And the, in this out of phase nature, current leads. That's what I want you to understand. But there is some amount of factor that current leads by. And that factor is pi over 2 radians or 90 degree 
or one over four cycle. So we're going to have it somewhere. The current leads, I see, okay, leads by some amount of current, lead by pi over two, right? Radius. Okay? The current leads by pi over two radius or 90 degrees or one over four cycle, all right? So we should not take note of this. If it's not clear, I'm going to repeat it. The current leads the capacity voltage by a factor pi. This is pi over two radians. Or 90 degrees. Or if you don't want that, you can use one over four cycle. That's the factor. Any of these represent the factor by which the current leads the capacity voltage. In other words, the capacity voltage lies. We will end it here. If there is anything that I've said that is not clear to you, put it in the comment section. All right? I thank you for your patience and for watching up to this moment. If I let you go, subscribe. Thumbs up. Push on the bell button for constant notification. And then share with your friends, students, and networks. I am signing out. See you in my next class. Up there or somewhere there.